the whole uh, country is reeling right now in shock in terms of understanding what has happened. I know these questions are happening internationally as well. But first thing, we have to express our solidarity with every community that Trump has targeted for his hate. But then our next step is to understand why this happened. And I think the the tragic irony of the events in the United States are captured by the fact that 61% of people who voted say that they do not like or trust Trump, and yet Trump has won the election. And I think the uh, lesson from all of this is that it's not that everybody who voted for Trump is rabidly racist, misogynist, and anti-immigrant. What this reflects is a cry against corporate domination of politics. And the reason Clinton was not able to win, even though she was running against a misogynist, a bigot, a sexual monster, was because she is the very epitome of the status quo that is so hated by working people and betrayed for decades. If the Democratic Party establishment had chosen Bernie Sanders as a candidate, I have no doubt that at the very least he would have made this a hugely competitive race. But I'm also, uh, you know, I'm also uh, uh, well aware that many people who supported Bernie are today saying, you know, if Bernie Sanders had been the candidate, maybe we would not be in this situation. And I think that captures the essence of the character of the Democratic Party establishment that. Yes, they wanted to defeat Trump. Of course, I believe that they wanted to defeat Trump and install Hillary as the president. But they, their desire to have, uh, to have a defeat for Trump was minimized by their desire to actually fight against the working class agenda of Bernie Sanders. So even though every poll during the primaries was indicating that Sanders was much better positioned to defeat Trump, they, they, meaning the Democratic establishment, did everything in their power to actually stymie Sanders and push him aside and install Clinton as a nominee. And now they're paying the price for it. Right now, people are quite saddened and fearful. And I think we have to be compassionate to that, understand that some, many of these fears are genuine fears. But we also have to reach out to people and say that we need to channel this fear into action and really build mass movements by learning the lessons of the experience so far and the lessons are that unless you build progressive mass movements and build the left but independently of the democratic and republican establishment we are not only not going to defeat the right-wing agenda we're going to see it grow uh, there is a there's a searching among american people for an alternative away from everything that has been on offer right now people are questioning the system itself and so we have to recognize that at this moment, what we have to do is rise up. You know, the left has to rise up. The labor movement and other leadership has a responsibility. The socialists have a responsibility to be out on the forefront, build massive protest movements, but not just in the abstract, you know, build against racism, against police violence with the Black Lives Matter movement, against the Dakota Access Pipeline for a $15 hour dollar an hour minimum wage nationwide for abortion rights and against every right-wing agenda but but if we are against right-wing agenda we also have to be against the wall street agenda